Compatibility. How do you know if all your parts are compatible? Maybe you're searching for a new PC, or perhaps you want to upgrade some parts in your current PC. Now, there is PC Part Picker where we choose all our parts and it checks compatibility, but sometimes it does warn you that there's potential incompatibilities. It's good to understand and know why these parts are compatible or know where to look for compatibility because it can seem kind of overwhelming even though building a computer can be fairly straightforward. So let's take it a step further and let's discuss compatibility. Hey what's up guys my name is JD from JD Tech Gear and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion tech reviews unboxings setup design so if you're into that sort of thing consider subscribing checking out the rest of the channel becoming part of the tech junkie family so first off before we get into the video I want to thank you guys so much for the support you have shown over the last couple of videos I can't even begin to express my love for you guys like literally just love yeah um Wow, who knew, like, you know, you might be strangers over the internet, my, I might be a stranger over the internet, but seriously, your support, I mean, gosh, I can't thank you guys enough for that, I seriously can't, and uh, it has been a rough couple of weeks, but you guys really made it better, uh, it definitely helped a lot, so I thank you guys so much for that. So I got this question from one of my uh, viewers, he commented on my video on all the parts that you need to build a PC. And he wanted to know how to make sure that all his parts were compatible. He knows that PC Part Picker checks his compatibility, but he wants to take it a step further and actually know why and understand that. And that's a very smart decision. I, I think that's important to know when you are building your computer. So today we're going to discuss that and understand why and where to check your compatibility and kind of understand it on a surface level. There's a lot more depth to go into, but it's not worth it just for the sake of this video so let's get into it so first let's discuss some of the major things that you need to look for when searching for compatibility and this is some of the hardware that is typically associated with specific compatibility so you have the motherboard ram gpu cpu cpu cooler power supply and size compatibility with your pc case now when it comes to older computers compatibility might be more difficult as certain components weren't as standardized as they are today. Um, older computers back then were more specifically built and pre-built. So finding those parts and trying to build an older computer can be a lot more difficult. But if you're talking about DDR3 computers within the last couple three to five years, those are still pretty well standardized and the same compatibility rules here in the video will apply to that as well. So when we look at the motherboard, the first thing you need to figure out is what type of socket it is. The socket refers to which type of CPUs can go in that specific motherboard. For instance, if you were to buy an Intel 7700K, you would need a motherboard with an LGA 1151 socket. So make sure you look into the specifications of the CPU you plan on buying and find the socket type and then search for a motherboard of that socket type. If you're looking at an AMD Ryzen processor, you would need an AM4 socket motherboard. Another thing you might want to look at is the type of chipset your motherboard is. Usually you don't have to worry about this, but what it is is basically the middleman that controls the data flow between the CPU and everything else in the motherboard. As long as the CPU is compatible with the socket type, it can physically go into the board. Here is an example of a socket type with multiple chipsets. Take for instance the LGA1151 socket type for Intel chips. There are two different types of chipsets, the Z170 and the Z270 motherboards. The Z170 was for Intel 6th generation processors such as the 6700K and so on and so forth. While the Z270 was for Intel's 7th generation processors such as the 7700K and that entire lineup. Now both generations can fit into the physical socket of the LGA 1151 but ultimately check the socket type to make sure the CPU can physically go into the board and that's what you usually have to worry about. If you plan on getting a CPU cooler, you need to make sure what types of socket it will fit with. Usually when you buy a CPU cooler like the Cooler Master 212 Evo, it has multiple configurations for different sockets. The list of socket types should be listed in the specifications of the CPU cooler that you're looking in. Next is the RAM. 
Uh, it's another piece of hardware you need to make sure your CPU slash motherboard is compatible with. The current generation of RAM being used today by Intel and AMD is DDR4. When you look at your CPU or motherboard, it will tell you what generation of RAM it uses. Moreover, the motherboard will also list the type of speeds that it can support. No worries though, if you bought RAM that has a higher speed than the motherboard supports, it will downclock that RAM to make it more effective. Also, there are formally two types of RAM, registered RAM, also known as ECC, and there's non-registered RAM, known as non-ECC RAM. Now you typically don't have to worry about this, but it's important to know. Registered RAM in a nutshell is used for servers, while unregistered RAM is used for desktop computers. Whenever you search for DDR4 RAM, it usually just comes up with desktop compatible RAM and not server RAM. So you usually don't have to worry about that. That's more search specific. Also make sure to use the same RAM when you put more than one RAM stick into your motherboard for optimal performance. Now you don't necessarily need that. You it's not going to be unused or incompatible, although it is highly advised if you want the best performance out of your RAM. Now when it comes to GPUs, usually you can put any type of GPU into the motherboard unless it doesn't have PCIe lanes. Modern GPUs use PCIe Gen 3 slots, but they are backwards compatible to work with PCI 2.0 slots. So if you plan on having multiple GPUs, make sure your motherboard has support with NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire. Those are typically the only things you would really need to worry about when it comes to GPUs other than the size compatibility, which I will get into in a moment. The other piece of hardware that you need to consider for compatibility is the power supply. Now I know it may seem pretty standard, but there are a few things to look for. Now you need to make sure you have plenty of power and headroom to power your components correctly. Now you don't need to go out and buy a 1000 watt power supply unless you have an extremely power hungry build. Usually 500 to 650 watts is a safe bet for most PCs of both budget and higher end builds. There are plenty of online PC power consumption calculators to use, but PC Part Picker also tells you how much power your current build is going to use based on the parts that you've selected. The second thing to look for in a power supply is its size or form factor. Usually most power supplies will fit in most cases, but make sure to look at the PC case specifications to make sure it can fit an ATX power supply, which is the standard size for a power supply. If it can't, you can find a small form factor power supply to fit the case, but usually most PC cases support an ATX power supply, so you usually don't have to worry about that unless otherwise stated. And lastly is the size compatibility. When you buy a PC case, there are several different types. There is EATX, which is a full tower, ATX mid tower, micro ATX slash mini tower, and mini ITX slash small form factor. Depending on the case, you need to make sure your components fit the desired PC case. Motherboards also come in different sizes in respect to the PC case sizes. They range from mini ITX to ATX, but you can definitely put a smaller motherboard into a larger case. You just can't do it the other way around, obviously. Also check your GPU size dimensions and see if it will fit inside the case. There are definitely times where the GPU won't fit inside the case because it's too long, especially dealing with hard drive bays. That can definitely interfere with the clearance of your GPU inside the case. You also have to check the CPU cooler dimensions to see if it will fit inside the case. Some air coolers are massive and tower above everything else and can get in the way of closing the side panel. Also, if you have a massive CPU air cooler, you might want to look into RAM that has a low profile heatsink so it doesn't push up against the CPU cooler. I usually go with RAM sticks that have a low profile heatsink anyways just for that reason. If you're water cooling your CPU, then you usually don't have to worry about the clearance of your RAM. And another size compatibility to consider is the case fans you plan on buying for your PC case. The PC case should have the dimensions of what size fans it supports in the description for the front, top, and back of the PC case. And we already discussed the power supply size compatibility so that's already been covered let me know if there's any other size compatibility issues you're considering that I haven't discussed in the video and that you just might have a question about I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can also if you have any certain questions about building a PC I might just make a video about it just state it down in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out and make a video about it so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video found it helpful and let me know what you guys think about it thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one Oh,